Galatians chapter 6, this will be the last lesson on, on, in Galatians, and then next Sunday morning we'll start in the book of Revelation. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Matt, uh, Galatians chapter 6, um, not Ephesians, right? Galatians, not Ephesians. Um, let me just read uh, down through verse 12, starting in verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Always keep that in mind. Let us do good unto all men. So this is why we're not going to go over, scratch the guy's bumper stickers off that's parked in our parking lot with all those vulgar, nasty, anti-Christ bumper stickers. And what it is, they're having a yard sale, the house next door to the parsonage, and they just take our parking lot, and uh, so we're not going to, I'm not going to go over there and raise a ruckus with them. Not going to do that. I have in times past. I have. And God smote me like crazy over that. Um, you can roll a stone of offense in front of someone. And Christ is a rock of offense, a stone of stumbling to many people. But to deliberately put one there, that's even in the law. You're not supposed to do that. So, do good to all people. All people. Amen? Uh, especially those who are of the household of faith. Anybody in this church who has a need, we're going to take care of that need. That's what God's called us to do. Then Paul said, you see how large a letter I've written unto you with mine own hand. We talked about that. And as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. And I submit to you that there are a lot of folks sitting in church in this country, countries all around the world, who say, Amen, praise God, hallelujah, dance around, speak in tongues, do their rituals, but when persecution comes, they're going to pop out. They're going to say, adios, I can't do this, and they're going to leave. And then the Bible is going to be true, where John said, they went out from us, but they were not of us. So you're going to have people sitting in church now for years who when persecution comes, they're going to leave. And they were never saved to begin, never even right with God to begin with. That, and, that, and persecution, and I'll show you this from the Bible, persecution is actually what marks the difference. Um, Psalm 7, you can turn there, I've got it on the screen. Psalm chapter 7. Those of you watching at home, I hope you like the cameras. Hope you like them. We're trying to do what we can to make things look good for y'all. and We love you and we appreciate you and want you to... The only thing we could do different is to give you 3D glasses and get some 3D cameras. That way you feel like you could actually, you're actually sitting in the church here. Psalm 7 verse 1. O Lord, it, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Keep that in mind. Who do you trust? You trust yourself, you trust government, you trust churches. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a what? Lion. Who's the lion in this case? Satan. He walks to and fro seeking whom he may devour. And you have to be sober so you can spot the lion. How did, think about how God designed lions. He designed lions to look exactly like the tall grass that they hide out in. That grass and lions are the same color. No, there's no green lions. 
but they're the same color. They hide very well. You never see them. They're very strong. Once they get a prey in their, in their paws, in their, I've seen them, I've seen them take down giraffes. And giraffes don't like to be taken down by lions. A giraffe kick can crush the skull of a lion just like that. And I've seen it happen. But those lions will gang up on that giraffe. They'll jump all the way up on its back. Once they got it down on the ground, it's over with. That giraffe is going to be dead. So anyway, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. O oh Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it, and let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust selah. Now this part here, David, I love David. David's saying, if I've, if I've committed a trespass against a person, like stealing Uriah the Hittite's wife, he said, if I've done something like that, then let the enemy come and tear me in pieces and persecute me. Why? Because I deserve it. I had it coming. When you read 1 Peter, you find out there's two ways that a person can be persecuted. One, you sinned and you have it coming and God is using your enemies to come against you to chastise you. And, Paul, and Peter said, don't complain, you deserved it. In fact, it's better than what you really deserve. But the other type of persecution is you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. But God is allowing this in your life to strengthen you. I was praying mace on Pastor Cooley and his guys there in that church who were out there trying to tell everybody about Jesus. And I mean it. They stood there calm. They didn't call the police. They didn't turn them in. They just prayed for them. That's persecution. That's real persecution. That big, burly black guy was ready to take Jason's head off. He, was, he wanted a fight. He wanted Jason to throw a punch at him, and he was trying to incite that in him. And Jason told me years ago, I might have nailed him, but he said, not now. And I, God bless him for that, okay? But that kind of stuff is coming. It's growing, and it's coming, okay? Um, let me tweet something out real quick. Every time Mike... I'm hearing Michael. Every time Michael splits the screen, it dumps the sound. Okay. So let me tweet something out real quick. All right. All right, we're working the bugs out of our new system. Psalm 30, let me read through these verses very quickly. Psalm 35, 3, draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am, thou salva I am thy salvation. These are verses that you might want to read. You might want to write these down in the front of your Bible. Because you are going to get persecuted. And I mean, it could be a human, like what Pastor Cooley encountered last night, or it could be a devil that is just stomping you, beating on... Paul said he was buffeted by this messenger of Satan every day, persecuting him. 
You might need these verses. Psalm 119, 157. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. That's important. Underline that verse. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. So let me, let me just kind of throw this at you. Can you understand why God will allow his saints to be persecuted? Do you get that? What is, why is God doing that? Let me just ask you, why does God allow people to be persecuted? Why does God allow his saints, his righteous, the, his beloved, he calls them, his bride, why does God allow his beautiful bride to be persecuted? Why does he do that? Huh? Okay, if they're backslid, like we talked about last Sunday, God will use that. Absolutely, absolutely. Devils, you'll get out in devil land. When you backslide, you backslide out to devil land. You automatically go to devil land. And they're there. And you'll get to a point where you say, I don't want this. I can't do this anymore. Boom, you're right back with God. That's a good answer. Somebody give me another one. Why does God, yes? Strengthen our faith. Strengthen our faith. So we can be blessed. Huh? So we can be blessed. So we can be blessed. Blessed are they which are persecuted. Blessed are me, ye, when men revile you and persecute you and say manner, all manner of evil against you falsely. Blessed are you. Give me another one. Still ain't the answer I got in my head. Great answer. Everybody's got a great answer. It's not the one I've got in my mind, though. Cubby. Test for purification? Yep. That's still not it. Okay, I'll just have to tell you. He says it. Verse in Psalm 119, 157. Many are my persecutors and my enemies. Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. So the guy, the big, I mean muscle, black guy that jumped Pastor Cooley last night. Why did he leave the church? Why is he probably not ever going to go back ever again? Something bad happened. And he said, I'm out. Now, was he even really in? Turn to, um, I, yeah. I, let me read this. You're right. Blessed are they, Matthew 5. Blessed are, this is part of the Beatitudes. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Michael, I know why it's, this sound's jumping out when you switch to the dual screen. I, I know why, but I can't explain it to you now. Okay? Now, turn to Matthew 13. This, this is why. This is why. And this, this is not the only way God does this, but this is one of the ways he does it. Roy, um, when you're having your bad days, do you, do you open your Bible up, read some of it, ask God to help you to get through that? Yes, he does. You have to. That's the answer right there. Look at Matthew 13, verse 20. He that received the seed into stony places. Remember, the parable of the seed and the sower, you got four different groups here. Remember that number, Gary, four, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And whenever you see four things in the Bible, three of them 
are the same or similar, and one of them's always going to be different. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the synoptic gospels because they look alike. John is different. Even in your DNA, I won't explain it all, but even in your DNA, the, the four base pairs, three of them are the same and one of them's different. Okay? If I were to say Shem, Ham, Japheth, and Noah, which one's different? Noah, he's the one that God spoke to. If I were to say Leah, Rachel, Billa, and Zillah, which one of those four women's different than the other three? Rachel, she was the true love. The other three were just, okay? So this is, in the parable of the seed and sower, three of these are, are the same because they all go to hell, every one of them. Only one of them's different. This, the uh, wayside goes to hell because the devil eats the seed up. The stony ground goes to hell because they don't produce fruit. Because the stony ground, they have no root in them. The thorns people go to hell because their sins choke the word out. They'd rather have their sin than the Bible. The fourth one's different. It's going to heaven because it manifests fruit. But look at verse 20. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when what? Tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. By and by he is offended. And he quits. He walks away. And in fact, that's what Psalm 119, 157 was all about. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. Those who are persecuted and they're not really saved, they'll leave. They'll quit. They'll close their Bible and never open it again. They'll say, I don't believe it. I don't believe all that stuff. I'm not buying it. I was at a church. I mean, how many people do we know? Or how many people do you think are out there that if you talk to them, and they would say, yeah, I used to go to church. But they had a big church split. People's calling us names. I'll never go back to another church as long as I live. The, and let me tell this story again. Mike Marks was his name. He had his own ministry, uh, Big Mike Ministries, Big Mike and Company. You remember him, Mom? I first met him at your church, and I was just, I loved the guy. So I invited him here to do stuff for our school. He did a whole week's worth of stuff here. And he and I just had a friendship. We'd go out to eat lunch and talk and this, that, and the other. But he was Joyce Meyer's radio voice guy. He'd be the one that would give the offer of the week. And then he would say, and now here's Joyce. I mean, he had a beautiful radio voice. And he was her radio announcer. And they started out at Life Christian Center here in Fenton under Rick, uh, what's his name? Huh? Rick Sheldon. They started out there. Mike was the a children's minister. Joyce was whatever. And they both come out of that church. And so they knew each other for years. And I sat down with Mike at lunch one day up in Arnold, Chinese restaurant. And we sat down, we was eating, and he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, I'm leaving the charismatic movement. I almost choked on my chicken. And inwardly, I was going, yes. But I went, really? Why? And he said they had a friend that went to Life Christian. So this guy had a business, had made good money, had a nice house, had a wife and two couple kids. Very successful. The man was at the church almost every day, doing stuff, funding the church, pouring money into the church. Anytime these big name guys like Kenneth... Hagen would come or whatever, he'd make sure, he'd put him up. He'd pay for the hotel bill. He would donate large sums of money. 
because Rick Sheldon was telling them that if you'll do these things, then you will have a nice house and you will have a successful business and you'll never be sick and your wife will love you and your kids will grow up great and everything is going to be sunshine and roses from here on out. He said, then the guy got sick. He didn't tell me what it was, but he said he came down with an illness and it was prolonged, it didn't go away. They prayed over him, poured oil on him, and said, well, you just need to claim it, name it in Jesus' name, and that you must have faith, and it'll go away. Well, it didn't go away. And because of his failing health, he couldn't operate his business, started losing clients, jobs, whatever it was, no money, bankruptcy, lost his house, and his wife said, well, I ain't staying with this guy. So she left him, took his kids. So he has no money, no job. His health is horrible. Lost his wife, lost his kids, lost everything. He goes back to Rick Shelton and says, I don't understand. I've sat in this church, was faithful. I did everything. I did everything you told me. I did everything Hagen told me to do. I did everything Joyce told me to do. I did everything. How come this happened to me? And Rick Shelton looked him in the eye and said, obviously there's something you're holding against God and you're not operating in faith. That guy got up and walked out and he told Mike Marks, he said, I will always believe in God. I will never walk into another church ever again. Now, I've prayed for, I don't know that guy, but I've prayed for him. That God had helped him see that that was all fake to begin with. But that's, what, that's what persecution, and like I said, God has different methods of doing it. Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy 13, God will send false prophets that will tell dreams and visions, and they'll take place. They'll actually happen. And God said, I sent that guy to see whether or not you're going to follow the dreams and visions and signs and wonders junk or you're going to follow my word. I sent him. I allowed the persecutors to come and persecute you. Do you know why? Because I'm sorting out who's mine and who isn't mine. And any number of those things will sure do it. And all of them are in the cup that Babylon holds. Jeremiah 51 says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. And God will use Babylon to either pour out drunkenness and false doctrine, or she hates true believers. She hates them. Remember Jezebel? Did she like Naboth? She lied and had him killed. But Naboth stood for the word of the Lord, and we're going to see Naboth in heaven one of these days. So do you see how it works? When you are persecuted, when devils are just kicking Roy nonstop, offering him a drink, tell him he needs to go and tie one on, tell him he needs to go get a bottle. When devils are doing that, and Roy knows they can't do it, but he wants to, that's persecution. And God will honor that. And God will take the people or the devils that are persecuting you. And he'll tear them to pieces. He will tear them to pieces. In Revelation 13, turn there. Revelation 13. I stood and looked at this, and I just, I mean, I, my, my jaw dropped. Revelation 13. Verse 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And I went, oh. But aren't the saints all powerful and, and, and can beat the devil? God's not going to let them here. God's going to let the Antichrist make war with the saints and overcome them. But then it will be known who is
and who ain't. It'll be known then who's right and who's been lying all this time. And I'll say this to everybody here and everybody online, everybody in Kenya, everybody around the world. Don't be surprised because there's some people that you know, maybe family members, maybe friends, maybe people you sit next to in church. There's people you know that they're, when the persecution hits, they're going to drop out to save their own skin. And you thought they were right with God. Is it possible to fool people? Better believe it is. Can't fool God, can you? Mm -mm. And God's going to, if you're a fake Christian, God will expose you to the whole world. Father, this book is right. And this book is our salvation. It is, Father, what we turn to when we are persecuted. When the devil does try to draw us away. When he does buffet us daily. This book is our salvation. This book is our anchor that keeps us from drifting away. This book is everything to us. Thank you, God, for giving us this marvelous, marvelous book. I love you for it. Thank you, God, for saving me with it and for not letting me drift away. Thank you, God. We love you and we praise you and we ask your blessings on your word in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen.